We don't usually focus on $100 video cards. It just doesn't seem to be what you guys want. I mean, seriously, in the last year of graphics card launches, our most successful video covering them is Linus being all like, holy sh to a $5,000 Quadro M6000. And our second most popular is the launch review of the 1080, a card most viewers can't afford. Not knocking you guys, it's just really expensive and not a great value compared to its little brother. The bottom line is that it seems like the internet would rather watch us react to a Lamborghini than give a square, level-headed review of a Civic. But that won't stop us, and we're back at it again with a review of the RX 460, a video card designed for mainstream and esports games at 1080p and aimed squarely at the 100-ish dollar price point, uh, sort of. I guess I'll need to address the absolute mess that is graphics card pricing these days. Cooler Master's Mastercase Maker 5 features their freeform modular system allowing you to customize, adjust, and upgrade. Make it yours at the link in the video description. Let's begin with the look at graphics card pricing that I promised. The current AMD RX product stack officially goes from 99 US dollars for a 2 gig RX 460 all the way up in pretty well spaced increments to 239 dollars for the 8 gig RX 480. But this is all according to the suggested price list that they give to us when we're sent a card for review, which is the only pricing reference we have when making a video for a card before its release. So in our launch reviews, when you see a price to performance comparison, these are the numbers we're using. They're official. They're supposed to represent the baseline price for this GPU, and they should be correct. Fortunately, we're a bit late on this card, and it's already available in stores, which gives us the opportunity to ask why the f when looking at Newegg.com, is there only one single card in AMD's entire RX product stack that is at MSRP, a reference RX 480 8GB. And I'm not just going after AMD about this. NVIDIA GTX 1080, no cards on Newegg at 599. GTX 1070, no cards at 379, from any brand. I'm just mad about it because some people make purchasing decisions based off price to performance graphs. It makes sense. And we make some of those graphs based on the numbers that they give us, which has resulted in them being unintentionally misleading. This isn't good for me, and it's especially not good for you. But enough about that. Let's dig into Polaris 11 in its desktop flavor, the RX 460. It's a fourth generation GCN architecture chip on Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET process. It's got 14 compute units and 896 stream processors with reference boards running at a boost speed of 1200 megahertz and a memory speed of seven gigabits per second with a peak performance of 2.2 teraflops, less than half of the RX 470, but still a lot better than the 100 ish dollar cards we've seen in the past. It comes with two or four gigs of GDDR5 RAM depending on the variant you purchase with a rated total memory bandwidth of 112 gigabytes per second on a 128-bit interface. The suggested ports are one DisplayPort 1.4 connector, one HDMI 2.0B connector, and one DVI-D connector, a fairly future-proof loadout. And typical board power is below 75 watts, meaning that, like the beloved 750Ti, a great upgrade card at the time for folks with pre-built systems, it doesn't need an extra connection from the power supply and can daintily sip on its 75 watts of power through the motherboard. Which brings us to the specific variant we have today, the XFX double dissipation 4GB Radeon RX 460 with a metal card extender, an added PCIe power 6-pin connector, two large fans, and a whopping 20 MHz factory overclock. It also features easily removable fan clips, but not easily removable fans. Confused? So was I. XFX has a technology called hard swap detachable fans, which features these same clips and fans that connect by touching contact points instead of being directly wired in. A really great feature, which looks the same on the outside as this one, but when you remove these fans, they just kind of dangle there. Cool, I guess, but not as cool. But when's the last time you thought to yourself, gee, I sure wish I could hot swap my computer fans. Anyways, let's talk about benchmarks. In DirectX 11 with Crisis 3 and Rise of the Tomb Raider, it trails the R9 270 and the GTX 950, but does, unsurprisingly, wreck the 750 Ti. 
Moving up to DX12, however, we see a bit of a different story. It edges much closer in Tomb Raider and actually beats all but the GTX 950 in Ashes of the Singularity, and you can check out my DX12 and Vulcan video here to learn more about why. Moving on, we have some new additions to our test lineup that I specifically included because of the positioning of this card. Dota 2, Counter-Strike GO, and Overwatch. All of these are mainstream games and relatively easy to run, but because there is a highly competitive component, serious players are still willing to buy a dedicated video card so they don't see any dips or stutters in the game. And the most interesting story here isn't necessarily where this card slots against others in the list. It's more the fact that it's, theoretically anyways, a very low cost option which manages to play all three of these games at near 100 fps or above with medium to high settings that makes the rx 460 a great choice if those are the kind of games that you really want to play and based on the kinds of views that our value amd builds from two years ago have that's probably a lot of people but the conclusion of this video isn't that simple, because this card costs $150, only 30 less than the MSRP for the RX 470, a much faster card, making it much harder to recommend. Not that those cards are actually available at MSRP anyways. Mass drop. In a nutshell, they take eager buyers, lots of them, and eager companies with products to sell, and they connect them. And the idea is that the more people agree to buy the product, the lower the price goes. That is to say, to a limit. Unfortunately, you will not be able to get the Red Scarf 2 custom keyboard that we're covering today for zero dollars, but you will definitely be able to get a better deal on it. So this is the Virgin... Virgin... <laughs> This is the version C of the Red Scarf 2. It is designed without the 10 function keys of its predecessor and features a unique 68 key layout. It consists of a PCB and a CNC aluminum case plate and feet and allows for customization of the lighting layout, including ISO and ANSI. It's fully programmable, allowing the user to utilize the unique layout as they see fit. And there are a variety of choices of anodized aluminum colors. It comes in black, gray, red, or silver. You can also add a set of standard layout blank or laser etched front printed PBT keycaps in cherry profile and the lighting can be controlled via a remote. So to check out this one and other drops, check out that link in the video description. Mass Drop has all kinds of great stuff, everything from keyboards to camping gear. So you can be a keyboard warrior or a weekend warrior. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Get subscribed, all that fun stuff. If you want to buy a card that probably isn't this one, check out the Amazon link in the video description down below. You can also see the link to buy our shirts down there. Those are, those are cool. If you want to discuss the value propositions of different cards and maybe the pricing in your area. We can't talk about the pricing in every different country here, but I know there's crazy stuff going on all around the world, not just in the States, and we're even Canadians, and there's crazy stuff going up here too. So. So yeah, let us know on the forum, and I'll see you guys next time. Watch this video, which is our review of the RX 470, a probably more sensible card to buy.